Section 9.2, the VSEPR model. Uh, the VSEPR model, which is just electron repulsion model, is this idea that all these electrons are negative, and if you have groups of negative electrons, they're going to want to get away from each other as much as possible, and it forces the bonds and the angles of the bonds between the atoms to be certain shapes as these electrons are repelling. So if you have... Uh, electron pairs, they're going to try to get away from each other as much as possible. The most important thing that you need to do before you start looking at the shapes is have this idea of an electron domain. An electron domain is just a group of electrons that are surrounding a central atom. So here I've got a central atom that's called A, and I, beside this A, in this particular case, I've got a lone pair. That would be a do an electron domain. It's a group of electrons attached to the central atom. I've got a couple of uh, single bonds here. A single bond is an electron domain. It's attached to the central atom. I also have in this picture a double bond. A multiple bond, like a double or triple bond, is also an electron domain. It's not more than one because it's a group of electrons attached to a central atom. So you're looking for, as you're predicting these shapes, you're saying, okay, what's attached to the central atom? Are there any non-bonding electron pairs, lone pairs? That's a, that's a, a domain. Uh, are there any bonds, either single, double, or triple bonds? That would be an electron domain. Okay, so let's look at the various shapes that you can make by putting different um, uh, attachments of electron domains to a central atom. So the first one we're going to look at is two. If you have two electron domains attached to a central atom, so that's a groups of electrons, they're both negative, they're repelling each other, it forces you to have a linear shape. There's no other way around it. Those two electron groups are going to oppose each other, get 180 degrees away from each other, and so you'll have a linear shape. So in this case, I've got a gray central atom here. Um, I've got a two, two bonds here. If you have two bonds, those two bonds are going to attach. So you'll have a linear shape. If you were to ever have two, elect uh, two atoms attached, they will also make a linear shape because there's no other way to make it. Even doesn't matter what the uh, number of non-bonding or whatever it's going to be, it'll be linear. Notice, too, that you've got two kinds of geometries. You've got the electron domain geometry, which is showing you all the groups of electrons around the central atom. And then you have the molecular geometry, which is talking about the molecule, but we're only looking just at the atoms. Uh, this will help you a little more in this next one when we have three. So we've got charge clouds here. Your book calls them electron domains, groups of electrons around a central atom. If you have three, you're either gonna have three bonds or you're gonna have two bonds and one set of, of, of non-bonding electrons. So here's the three bonds. The three bonds are, they're gonna get away from each other as much as possible. So that will be 120 degrees. It'll be 120 degrees away. And they all are on the same plane. So it's a triagonal planar. So triagonal like triangle planar. Um, and that would be three, three uh, electron domains. If you have three domains, but two of them are bonds and one of them is a non-bond. Okay, this would, this would um, the sulfur dioxide here is an example of that. One would, one is shoving them away, and so you're going to end up with a bent. Normally, this would be 120, but what you're going to see is that this guy is actually, this green cloud is bigger. Uh, it's a broader uh, set of, of electrons than a bond would be, because in a bond, both of the atoms are pulling on those electrons and kind of putting them into a more narrow space. Since only one nucleus is, is attached to these electrons, they're kind of wider. And as they're wider, they're shoving these together. So we see that that's not 120. You're going to get a, this is going to be less than 100, less than 120, because this guy, and this is going to be greater, I'm uh, sorry, this is less than 120, and this is greater than 120, because it's shoving those away from it more than a bond would. The next case you would have would be four. Again, all these are, are following the octet rule. If you have four bonds, or so we're looking at four electron clouds or four electron domains, one would be four bonds. 
So if you have four bonds around this gray central atom, you're going to have a tetrahedral. And a tetrahedral is um, it's a triangle. It's a four, uh, four equilateral or, uh, triangles um, with a triangular base, that idea. So if one of them is a, is a non-bonding pair, the, molec the, mo the molecule is going to look like this, but the, or the original geometry or the electron domain geometry is still going to be tetrahedral. So you're going to have that, ge that geometry of, of the, where the electron clouds are. Then you're going to have the geometry of what the atoms actually look like, what you can see if you were to look at the, at the molecule itself. So in the case of one of these being a cloud, this is going to be called a triagonal, because these are triangles, pyramidal. So it's a it's it would be three atoms attached to a to a central atom, and then a on the other side of it's going to be some kind of a um, a cloud of non-bonding pair. So this can be triagonal pyramidal. If you have two groups like that, you're going to have a bent. So uh, so this would be a ammonia would be a good example of this triagonal pyramidal. Water is a good example of the bent. So you're going to have two clouds. So in, so this original is normally 109.5, but you're going to see that this is going to be greater than 109. So this will be greater than 109.5, and this here will be less than 109.5 because the, the green cloud is bigger and it shoves them farther away. Okay, so it would be like a balloon a one bigger balloon shoving the other balloons away when you're making a if you were making shapes out of balloons like we did so the bent uh, would be the same you're gonna have I think this is like this is gonna be something like 107 and I believe this is like 104.5 rather than than 109.5 so it's gonna be closer together because these non bonding clouds are having more of an effect to shove them together now, if you have uh, more than four, okay, more than four pairs would obey the or four pairs would obey the octet rule. Anything more than four, and you're going to be breaking the octet rule, but that's okay. If you, as long as you, the central atom is anything in like third row or fourth row, etc., something bigger, there's uh, some sufficient uh, empty d shell orbitals that those electrons can hide in. Um, and they're big enough to where they can get away from each other. So it's okay to break the octet rule for bigger bigger central atoms. But if you were to have five, it would break it. And if you were to have five bonds, okay, five actual bonds, then you're going to have what's called triagonal bipyramidal. So you're going to have a pyramid on top, okay, pyramid on top, and also on the bottom. So so it's like a it's like a three sided pyramid and then the bases are touching each other. Notice that these are in different configurations. This middle is like is just like the triangle planar. They're 120 degrees from each other. They're, they're as far away from each other as possible. And then you have these axials coming out of the north and south. So coming above the plane of the triangle pyramidal or uh, planar and then out of the bottom of the plane. So the top one, this is can be called an axial an axial which is 90 degrees this is 90 uh you know just like from the from the top to the equator would be 90 degrees and then these guys to here are called equatorial like an equator so they're they're 120 degrees apart so the axials are coming out of the top and bottom and then the equatorials now the equatorials are farther away to each other than the axial is to the equatorial. So the axial is only 90 degrees, the equatorial is 120. So if you have any of these non-bonding pairs, uh, they're going to be all equatorials. And so in the case of this guy, um, this is, has a big enough effect that it's going to bend this slightly, and you end up with what they call a seesaw. You can kind of see a seesaw there, or airplane. The If you were to have two, two of these, well, that forces this to be straight, so this is T-shaped. So you have a seesaw if you have one non-bonding pair, T-shaped if you have two. If you have three, remember these are all going to be equatorial because uh, they're farther apart, so they have more space to, to be. It forces this to be linear again, so you have another linear. So you had a linear when you had two electron domains. 
You also have a, a linear possibility when you have five uh, where that they're all in the middle and they're surrounding it and you end up with just straight straight up and down. The, the axials are the only ones there. Uh, the other last possibility is if you have six. If you have six, you're going to end up with an octahedral. And a six is a, it's essentially a Egyptian pyramid. Uh, you're going to have a square base with triangular sides, and then you're going to have two of them. They're all they're touching at the base, so one inverted on top of the other. So these are octahedral. So if you had six bonds, they'll all be at the vertice there. If you have one uh, that is a non-bonding pair, then you don't end up with a double. You end up with a single. You have a square pyramid, just in a normal Egyptian pyramid. Okay, just like that, only it's one because the um, the non-bonding pair would be on the bottom of that. In the case of uh, two non-bonding pairs, then the only thing, it'll they will stay away from each other top and bottom. They'll try to avoid each other because they're they have a strong impact. Whatever is left is going to be the just a square, I mean, it's, and it's going to be on one plane, so it'll be square planar. So these shapes, as you familiarize yourself with the shapes, are actually pretty easy to guess once you know the five basic shapes, which is linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, uh, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral, those five, and then in your mind, take one atom at a time away and replace it with a non-bonding pair, and then you end up with all of these various shapes.